The title says it all, 10 Advanced Figma Hacks of 2024. Make sure to download the exercise file as well. It's, a link is in the description so you can follow along. Let's dive in. All right, so the very first advanced Figma hack is to utilize a status kit. Here is a real project that my team and I worked on. We built and designed our own website for our product Ship Faster UI. You can see that there are lots of different sections and parts of this website. So obviously, if I zoom out, you can see everything. To keep everything organized, what we like to do is to utilize statuses for the different sections. So as you can see at the top over here, this is dedicated to the homepage. If I click on this status, we actually built and designed our own status kit. So you can change the sizing, you can actually go ahead and turn specific things on and off, and you can also change the state depending on what stage that part of the website or project is at. So inside Figma Hacks, I've gone ahead and imported the status kit. I can go to my assets and I can go ahead and drop down a status, which you can see just like that. I can go ahead and move this to the top and I can go ahead and change the size. We can go ahead and turn on the description, turn on the status, and from the status, we can change the different state. This is a great way for you to manage all the different parts of your project, keeping things organized and documented for other stakeholders to be part of the project as well. The second advanced hack is around annotation. Obviously, we work on lots of different projects, um, my team and I, so we always try to push forward the best practices. We always like to document our designs so the developers know what to build and some of the interactions we intend. As you can see on the left-hand side over here, this is one of the note cards that we've designed. And obviously, on the right-hand side in the properties, you can see that, whoops, you can see over here, we can change the direction of the annotation. So on the left-hand side, on the right-hand side, we can turn off the background. We can also put a title inside as well. Heading up back over to my Figma hacks, I can go open up my assets and then I can actually go ahead and drop down a note. And as you can see, we have a note over here. We can position it anywhere we want and we can set this to the bottom and we can extend it however we want. So that's a great way for you to document your designs. And if you wanna download the status or the annotations, there is a link in the description for you to download and import. Then another advanced Figma hack is to use arrows for nested items. And what do I mean by that? So let's go ahead and take a look at this component we've uh, built. You can see that there is a date picker with a calendar underneath and an, over on the right hand side under the properties for the components, you can see that we have used an arrow to label or to the designer know or anyone in this file know that this label is associated to this label over here. This might be something very simple, but if you have built components with lots of different properties, you'll notice that having these arrows to let people know what is nested and what is relevant can be very, very handy. Now, another place to utilize nested arrows is also for your pages. Let's say we have a page for designs and then we have a section that we want to dedicate to, let's say, archived designs, for example. You can notice that having a nested arrow, once again, is just very easy on the eyes and lets people know exactly what this page or the context of this page is. Moving on to another advanced Figma hack is to utilize minimum width and maximum widths in your designs. So take a look at this landing page over here. We've got a section for different features. And if we go ahead and reduce the size of this section, you'll notice that the boxes don't really have a minimum width or a maximum width. But what if we wanted to make sure as we collapse this landing page, that these boxes stop at a specific width so it doesn't break the actual designs. Well, we can by going ahead and just selecting all the boxes and then we head over to Auto Layout under Fill. We can go add a minimum width and let's just say we want it to be 300 pixels. The red line indicates that that's where the breakpoint will stop or the collapsing will stop. So if we go ahead and select the Features section and we go ahead and reduce, you'll notice that there we go. No matter how far we reduce the viewport size of this section, the boxes will stop collapsing. Now, once again, you can also apply this to a maximum width. And as you extend the actual viewport of this section, it will stop at a particular point in time, depending on what max width you place. Now onto another Figma hack. 
So this one is around variable breakpoints. Now we all know that there is a lot of hype around variables and I have updated my Figma course around this as well, but here's a very advanced one that not many people are currently using. But if you wanted to go ahead and go to your local variables, you will see that I've already implemented and created some breakpoints for you. And depending on what project you are working on, let's say you have some standard breakpoints for tablet, desktop and wide desktop. Maybe you will have a mobile one as well. But for this example, I've kept these three very simple ones. You can create these variables for tablet, desktop and wide desktop. You can then go ahead and select your design section. And for the width, you can actually go ahead and apply a variable. So you go apply variable on the width and we can set this to breakpoints. And you can see that it's already assigned this to 768 because it's utilizing the value from the tablet. So if I go ahead and select variables, the parent container, and I head over to appearance and under apply variable mode, breakpoints, I can go ahead and select tablet, change this to desktop, change this to wide desktop, and you can see that this will systematize the breakpoints for all our designs. So if you are working on a project that has some set breakpoints and they won't change ever again, or they won't be changing for a long period of time, you can turn them into variables as well and then assign them to your frames. Another Figma hack that I guarantee you that you probably didn't even know is that if you have a FigJam file open, so hitting the plus and open up a FigJam project, if you go ahead and select the connector, right? And draw down a connector, whoops. You can go ahead and select that, Command C or Control C on a Windows device, paste this into Figma, and you will realize that you can actually go ahead and link specific frames up and recreate that same experience from FigJam over in Figma as well. So it's a great way for you to annotate your designs and also link them up if that's something that you need. Another Figma hack is to make your icons searchable. So let's say you have a thousand icons, but then when it comes to finding the specific icon that you need, it becomes impossible. It becomes such a monotonous task that you sometimes can't even find the right icon. So if I go ahead and hit commands uh, forward slash and I type in assets, this icon is actually called audiobook, right? So if I type in audiobook, it pops up. But what if I forgot the name of this icon? but I just know it was related to maybe music, right? So audio books are related to music and I typed in music, but nothing would come up. What we can do is we can go ahead and double click onto our icons, head up over into the top right corner under component configuration, under description, we can add in tags. So we can type in tags, for example, or you don't even need to write in tags. You can actually just type in music. You can close this. And then when you hit command forward slash and go to assets and type in music, you'll be able to find everything that's related to music. So you can make your icons searchable for relevant tags. And a great way is to just generate them with ChatGPT or Claude.ai and copy and paste those tags and pop them in for each icon, making them easily accessible for the wider team. Another Figma hack is to auto layout your parent frame. I've selected this design. We have three sections, uh, features, hero, and a header. And if I wanted to realign, you would notice that nothing really happens. I have to manually realign all the different sections within this design. So a very quick way is to just make sure you hit shift A onto your parent container. That makes all the different sections inside easily adjustable. So you can go up and down arrow on your keyboard and you can easily readjust the layout like that. So it makes it very easy for you to finalize your designs and move different sections around. So auto layout your parent frame. And this one is a little bit more advanced. Okay. So it might take a little bit of time for me to go through, but it will be worth it. Let's say we have a progress bar and our goal is to make this over maybe 10 seconds or so, this will go ahead and fill up to 100%. And once it turns 100%, we can turn the color green, for example. So how do we do that? Let's go ahead and take a quick look. This progress bar that we've created is actually 200 pixels wide. And then if we double click onto the actual progress of this bar, it's currently at 20 pixels and the color is this blue. The first thing we need to do is go ahead and create our variables. So if I go over to my local variables, you can see that in your file, there's already been two variables created, one for the color 
and one for the width. So blue and it's 20 pixels. First thing we need to do is go ahead and double click onto our progress bar and select the fill, go to libraries and assign the variable blue over to this bar. The second thing we need to do is take a look at our width. You can see that it's currently at 20 pixels, but we want to utilize a variable because we plan to change that over time. So click on the drop down, apply variable, and we can make this progress bar. You can see now this is linked to the actual variable itself. And no variables are the beloved feature of Figma right now. I have updated my Figma course, which does go into a deep dive into variables and design systems and advanced prototyping. It doesn't include the new UI3 update just yet, but once that is rolled out to the, the global audience of Figma worldwide, I then plan to do a release. But for now, the UI might be slightly different, but it's still very relevant. So now that we've got this linked up, we then need to create an interactive component that loops in the background, so then it will increment this progress bar over time. Hit R on your keyboard, and then go ahead and duplicate that and create two squares next to each other. The first thing we need to do is actually turn this into an interactive component. So highlight them both, top right corner, hit the three dots, and then create component set. Now the first thing we need to do is double click onto the first rectangle, go to prototype, and then click and drag and link it up to the second rectangle. So what we wanna do is every half a second, we want this progress bar to increase 20 pixels each time. So within five seconds, it should get to the end and become 100% complete. Once it's 100% complete, we want to turn the progress bar green. Let's change on click to after delay because every half a second, which is 500 milliseconds, we actually want to check if the progress bar is less than 200, because remember this progress bar is 200. So as long as this progress is below 200 pixels, we actually want to add an action. We want to set the variable of the progress bar to progress bar plus 20. Right, so every half a second, if this blue progress is less than 200 pixels wide, we are going to add another 20, another 20, another 20 until it reaches 200. And because it won't be below 200 anymore, we can then set another trigger or another action, okay? So after that is done, we can go ahead and close that. We can then make sure that this is linked over to the second square. Once that's done, select the second square, drag the connector, link it back to the original state, change on click to after delay and make this one millisecond and make sure the animation is instant. So what's happening is that we're doing that half a second check every half a second. And once it's made the check, it's going to return back to the original square over one millisecond, which means it's practically instant. And then it's gonna check it again, check it again, check it again. So once that is done, we can go ahead and move this interactive component outside. We can rename this to maybe timer. I'm gonna click outside of my frame. Command forward slash assets timer. There we go. Leave that in the top right corner. And if I go ahead and preview my prototype, you can see that the progress bar completes. That's exactly what we we want. And what's happening is once again, when you place this component down, it's running through that logic over here. So it's a looping variable that will complete this progress bar. Every half a second, it's going to check if it's below 200 and bang, 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 it goes all the way up. The final Figma hack is around user variables. So a lot of us are UX and UI designers and we create lots of different flows for different users. And more specifically, when we are doing user tests, we sometimes wanna make sure that the test is as relevant as it can be for the participant. So let's say we've got a user flow over here and we are testing with three users. We can go over to our design panel, go to our local variables, we can create a new collection and we can might call this user testing. We might go create variable, string, and it might be the name. And we for the first participant, their name is Mizko. We can do a second test, their name is Jane. And the third test might be Eric. So from here, we can close that, hold down command or control on a Windows device, directly select 
the name or whatever text layer you want to modify. You can then can go over to topography. You can go ahead and select apply variable and you can choose name. And as you can see very quickly, this has now been linked to the name of the prototype. So if we go to user variables, the parent container, hit apply variable mode, user testing, one, that works, two, and three, it's all working. And as, as you can see, you can then go ahead and apply different variables to all the different stats and all the different metrics to really make sure that your user tests are as relevant and precise for the participant that you are interviewing. So hopefully this gives you some advanced Figma hacks that you can utilize in your workflow today. Feel free to check out my Figma Masterclass course. It's been updated for the last Figma updates. It doesn't include UI3 just yet, but it does include deep dives into variables, design systems, and so much more. So hopefully you've learned a bunch. If you like this video, make sure to gently smash the like button, subscribe for the diehard fans. And for those who have made it this far, let me know what you had for dinner yesterday. Let me know in the comments below. And if you want to keep learning, check out this video.